Hello, my name is Alistair and uh, I'm the Bad Mini Painter. So today should be the 24th of June, which means that 10th edition and the Leviathan box has arrived. And uh, you're probably playing with that. Now I'm not a famous YouTuber, so uh, I can't do anything special with the new models because I will get it on the 24th. So what I can do is uh, paint up the Parasite of Mortrex and uh, to make it a little bit interesting, only using uh, two thin coats from uh, Duncan Rhodes, because it's, he, he's from Games Workshop, or he used to be, and there's a theme there. Anywho, I bought a bunch of paints and I want to use them. But first, uh, Wraithbone, because why not? Um, so Wraithbone was a bad choice. You can see it on the gloves around on the, on the model, but that user error as well as just it's it's a bad paint anywho so first i use uh, elven skin all over the flesh of uh, this parasite thing and uh, i must say this is the first time i'm using anything from the um, from the two thin coats line and even if you thin it down, it is highly pigmented, so it, it's keeping on theme. I actually, I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's pretty good. And uh, when it comes to dry brush, uh, brushing, I decide to use Ivory Tusk for the uh, flesh and just uh, dry brush it on to keep some of that elven flesh visible um, to add some gradient and um, yeah, to not just have a white model um, so I figured that normally I would do Kislev flesh and then slap uh, some kind of white on top of it like an off-white and dropping the model um, but, but uh, this worked well um, it's 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 a good paint to dry brush with because it runs fairly thin but it's it's really heavily uh, pigmented like that I think that's his uh, the whole point of, of that uh, of that line of paints. Uh, I had to use some Citadel, uh, the Carol Burke Crimson, uh, simply because I couldn't find a good alternative in the two thin coats line. Um, I tried theirs and it, it didn't look that well and I don't want to do a video where I just shit on a, a wash from a line that I otherwise quite enjoyed. So what I do with that is basically all the little vents and all the um, uh, little creases and, and stuff like that, I, I will add a, a thin coat of this uh, on it. And on bigger models, I would uh, do it thickly and then dry brush the white again. Um, maybe not dry brush it as heavily the first time, uh, but on a small model like this, it's yeah, it's 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 just fine like that. And uh, oh yes, for the wings, I go back again to Elven Skin, um, and I try to be precise. And again, it even though it's thinned down quite heavily, like I I, I use a wet palette. Um, it, it goes on really, really nicely. Uh, I don't think you need two coats. I'm sure as hell you, you can, but it's it's not something you should be forced to. Uh, like it's it's not out of necessity, because even though thin, this is just one coat. Um, I used the flesh wash on on the wings, um, and that is from two thin coats. It's a it's a fairly dark flesh wash. It's I feel like it's quite a bit darker than uh, Reichland uh, Flesh Shade, so you can thin it with some medium. And in uh, retrospective, to save myself some time, I should have done that. I should have thinned it quite heavily, um, so it didn't darken down everything. But it's it's not that big a problem, because I will just go back in with Elven Flesh, Elven Skin, and uh, touch up. And it actually uh, touching up like this, where you leave all the dark areas uh, and you just highlight all the raised areas, uh, kind of villainily, like um, it gives a nice look. Next, it's a uh, berserker red. Uh, yeah, it's it's again it's it's for the claws and 
and all that good stuff um and it's the same thing with uh with the rest of of, of the paints from two thin coats it's it's nicely pigmented it flows very well off my beaten up brushes i need new brushes i i, I or i need to take care of the brushes i have it's one or the other i have two kids i need new brushes i mean who has time for cleaning really um yeah uh, and then i follow up with uh, demon red that actually was sold out from my local paint pusher so i had to go to wayland to uh, to get that one but um yeah gave me an excuse to buy other stuff so that was good uh, and i just uh, yeah put it on the claws and i i don't go uh, to the end i i leave a little bit of that berserker red uh, at the base i think it, it gives a nice look and i use a brush where the bristles are kind of um, beaten because that uh, that makes the end uneven so it looks a little little bit more natural and now for the fun part am uh, amethyst amethyst rain um, a deep purple paint uh, and that's for the carapace and again as you can see it, it it goes on a little bit more thinly but that may be up to me thinning it a bit too much so two coats in this case is, is probably a good idea. Uh, next, Saucer's Cloak. And that is uh, to add some wear and tear on uh, the armor plates, the carapace on, on this bug. And I generally just add these lines, pretty much as you see on the box art. Uh, well, the same pattern anyway, not same precision at all. And it's, it's one of my favorite parts about painting turnits. It's actually doing the carapace. It's utterly satisfying to see it all come together. And of course, just be careful not to hit the skin. Now, finally, we can do runic uh, purple. Yes. And that's just at the end of each uh, carapace line or each plate, I just add little dabs um, to make it a little bit lighter at the end. It does quite a difference uh, and it takes very little time and effort to, to do. So I don't know, why not? And again, uh, the two other purples uh, went on just fine with one layer. Uh, the, the first, the dark one, the amethyst, 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 uh, the, the, um, that one needed two coats. Then I go in with white star, which is the incredibly white color in the two thin coats line. Uh, and I do the teeth and I do some highlighting around on on the flesh or the, on, or the body. So all the points that kind of sticks up there that would be caught by light uh, I just give a little dab and uh, I I still haven't figured out the perfect camera angle and uh, definitely not keeping the model inside that angle anywho and lastly fanatic orange uh, and that's just to highlight the claws this really simple tiny little step to do but again it, it does a big difference and it doesn't take a lot of time it it's not time consuming and uh, it has some variations and uh, it also makes the claw look a little like sharper a little bit more worn uh, used yes anywho and that's the last step and uh, the end result is uh, this lovely thing I'm about and that is roughly 20 minutes of work I think that's a, a fairly decent result I know I, 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 I'm bad like I'm bad at this that's I don't it's just but that's decent you, you could definitely put that on the battlefield without people showing like throwing fruit at you or booing you eh? 
Yeah, decent. Anywho, I hope you are enjoying 10th edition right now. While you're watching this video, you should be painting up your own turret. Uh, the screamer thing I'm about looks awesome. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and uh, bye.